Ethan and I are ready to fly. We really can't see Stephen right now. Um, boarded our flight from Miami. I mean, from Nassau to Miami. There's Stephen. There's Stephen. Can I get a wave? We're going to be best friends for the next week. He's so excited. He can't wait. <laughs> Innocent hipster. How'd you enjoy the flight? I was sleeping for the majority of it. Except for the night terrors, but you know. I should have had night terrors. I watched the conjuring too. I broke my head on. Is oh. it because of the night terrors? No, it's just that. I can't see my head. Oh yeah. It's too cold on the inside. It's 7 degrees Celsius. Which is 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Very cold. And also, we're inside. Yeah, we're inside. <laughs> <laughs> just you know, just you. Day just one. Safe. Day one of the excitement. And it's raining. And it's raining. But that's helping it to stay a little warmer. So she says, when it starts snowing, I want you to be the same one to, to It's not going to snow while we're here. Okay. No. We'll see y'all on the train. We've got a two hour train ride ahead of us. More sleep. More not sleep. It's one o'clock? What? No, it's one o'clock home. Yeah. Just a bit. Six hours. We're six hours ahead right. of the Bahamas. home for the next few days in Erfurt. Tiniest shower ever. Strange hanging thing. Me. Stephen and I are at a bus stop outside Ikea. We came to Germany to go to Ikea. Do you want to tell the folks how we ended up at Ikea? Hey, young. Sorry. Only <laughs> The opposite of young. Who speaks as much English as we speak German is trying to assist us yeah. in finding the IKA yes. uh, Culinary Olympics. Mm -hmm. And so he, he may have, by mistake, sent us on <laughs> to Ikea. Wrong bus. And he looks so happy when the bus pulled up here. He said, and he's like, this is, Ikea. This is where you want to be. <laughs> but no, we are literally lost in translation. Uh, I think we got off to not hurt his feelings. We did get off to not hurt his feelings. And also because we didn't know like how long it would be till the end of the line. And then it turned around. I didn't want to be lost oh. in translation on the bus. We were literally getting off at the right stop, and Half this man stopped us. He's like, no, Ikea. Are you going to Ikea? You're like, I-K-A? So we're here, and now we got Christina won't let me go inside to get a no. 50 cents cup of coffee. We just have six more minutes until the bus comes back. With a free refill. Like, literally, it's amazing, because I'm reading the sign, none of us is English. But... That's cool. I know savings when I see it. Coffee, tea, cacao. <laughs> Don't mind that right. one. In Coffee. Front of it. 
just because we've been traveling for over 24 hours, it's cool. Let's travel some more. It's cool. is making its final preparations before the Culinary Olympics, which kick off tomorrow in Effort, Germany. But as the team tells us, the road to the Olympics wasn't without its challenges. Chefs Sheldon Tracy Sweeting and Ron Johnson have trained for years to compete in the 2016 Culinary Olympics, but the hours of planning and training couldn't have prepared them for the largest obstacle they have had to date, Hurricane Matthew. How Matthew just, just beat us to pieces. Went away to purchase food, um, came back, Hurricane Matthew came. All that, that week, nine, ten days, which you had to allocate for uh, refining dishes and stuff. Everything, because of electricity, no electricity, no water and all that stuff. Everything, I had to throw everything away. Uh, yes, uh, due to our best friend Matthew, you know, um, you know that that that, that, that caused a lot of uh, uh, I mean uh, I mean trouble. You know you know from a logistical st standpoint because you know we we had to throw away a lot of product. That setback pushed back the preparation schedule and forced the chefs to improvise. Sweeting says concepts should have been finalized the week of Hurricane Matthew, but that just wasn't possible given the circumstances. On top of that, the chefs are battling a language barrier, but they found a solution for that too. One key thing: Google Translate. All they tell you sometimes, Google it, Google it. So when you get the translation, you know, or you show them on, 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 on your uh, smart device, they, they, they can relate them, and they, they know what you're talking about. But it's still a challenge because you're using heavy cream, milk, trying to find condensed milk and all this stuff like that. It's a challenge, but we're working through it. 2,000 chefs from 50 nations are competing at the Culinary Olympics from October 21st to 25th. Sweeting will compete in an individual category tomorrow. That includes preparing a five-course festive menu and four tapas, too hot and too cold. Meanwhile, Johnson will compete in an individual category that includes an exhibition of culinary artistry with four cocktails and a five-course meal. None of the ingredients can be replicated across courses. Johnson and Sweeting say there is a lot to look forward to over the next few days. This has a feel of John Canoe. You start to battle now. So, yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's, he's going to be the first one out the, uh, in the gate, you know, and, and um, uh, any, any which way, you know, you know, that I can, I mean, assist him, I, I will. I have to be ready by 3.30 a.m. Just be set up for 5. The transportation will pick us up, so we have to be ready. There are, are numerous um, competitors working at the hotel, and we all have to be ready at the same time to be dropped off at the, at the venue where the competition is being at. The chefs will get an early start on competition tomorrow, and our news and RTV cameras will be right there. Be sure to tune in to our newscast for daily updates. Reporting from Effort, Germany, for our news, I'm Christina McNeil. Even though it's salmon, Stephen's complaining because he wanted chips. But it's uh, lox and palms. Lox and palms. I learned it today. I'm a quick learner. Well, you know what? I know the word for chocolate. So she chocolate. asked me if I wanted palms, and I said yes. Whatever. <laughs> Simple. I'm gonna enjoy my first uh, German meal. He is faux fish and chips mm -hmm. because he didn't know the word for chips. How are you enjoying things so far? I mean, no, okay. 
there are some really exceptional stuff, like stuff like this. Whereas like this is silly stuff. I can't exactly switch my camera around right now. Is this awesome? I feel like you can switch it around. No, you can't. Sure. I'm sure. Anyway, stuff like this. Whereas like it's simple, but at the same time, it's like all this action happening. I mean, you have an intricate ish like that. I'm not even getting into that. Anyway. Sure that that's like that's crazy. Like this time. It's birthday greetings for longevity. That's the name of it. Yes, but it's like this is made from something similar to the tower leaf. This grows wide and wide, it's steady for all the for all the older people. Yeah. How hungry are you right now? Like, how hungry have these things made you? This isn't made me any hungry, but somebody's cooking food. And that's making me. But this is a. I'm hungry. It's two fifteen, and we've only had breakfast so far. We, one of us almost missed breakfast. Oh my goodness, Abraham Lincoln. I think Stephen has me on a starvation diet while we're in Germany. First of all, <laughs> I met you at breakfast, chilly. I had to run to breakfast because I was, like, breakfast at 10. I woke up at 9.48. Yes, and for that reason, we missed the press tour. But um, we still found our Bahamian chef. Um, after going through numerous numbers, well, not him, but his work. Um, and now we've been looking at all of the various we've been looking mostly food sculptures right. and other stuff that looks like real food, but then it kind of doesn't look like real food. The coal on the hot serve coal. Hot serve coal. Is basically an appearance. This entire thing today is... You eat with your eyes. Right. None of this is for taste, except that giant chocolate thing in the back there. I don't, I don't think know. that was for tasting. Speak for yourself. Speak for yourself. You probably it's, shouldn't unless you want to get kicked out of the Culinary Olympics. I think they'll kick me out all the way. That's what no, they, they would They would kick you all the way out. Be like, oh, you're from the Bahamas? Yeah. Oh, I'm, See yourself out, sir. Me? German, German. <laughs> German, German, German. <laughs> That's how we've been communicating with people I, for the not past few days. <laughs> There's a lot of German, 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 question mark, question mark, English, English, English? Oh, this is really cool. I have to get this. That's what I was saying. The uh, Star Wars one. Oh, the reflections are messing it up. It's like, you know what they are? They're pumpkins. Yeah, it's for Halloween. Chef Sheldon Tracy Sweeting making his debut at the 2016 Culinary Olympics with a five-course festive menu and a selection of hot and cold tapas. He says while you won't find too many native Bahamian ingredients in these dishes, there's still a Bahamian flair. More than 800 chefs from around the world are competing in individual competitions at the Culinary Olympics. Sweeting says creativity was crucial to designing a menu that spoke to his Bahamian background while showing off his culinary skills. Well, the challenge with that is you have to use ingredients that most people know, like Chef Ron said, using some mango, coconut, banana, stuff like that. I can't use ganap or juju or sapodilly or soursop because they don't know what it is. You have to try and incorporate or use items that they are familiar with. The Bahamas is just one of four countries in the Americas represented at the international culinary event. Sweeting says if judges don't know an ingredient that may be indigenous to the Bahamas, they can't judge it. And he needs his creations to be in the runnings for a medal. Yes, this is just the pinnacle of all culinary competition in the world. We, we have the Taste of the Caribbean. That's a regional and somewhat <coughs> local competition. This is an international competition where you have thousands of chefs from all around the world competing. And I'm not competing against Ron and he's not competing against me. We are competing against a standard. So once you meet the standard, you get gold, silver, or bronze. One of his cold tapas was a new take on a deviled egg. Sweeting deviled a quail egg with chicken liver parfait and beet port gel served on a herb cracker. Part of the eye-catching display for Sweeting's five-course festive menu featured a truffled Cornish hen breast and leg roulade with corn royale, quail egg, chives, and bell pepper flakes served with a Cornish hen saffron bouillon. Sweeting says he came to make an impression. This is the second time as an individual. In 2012, I competed. I got a bronze medal. 
prior to that, we, uh, the Bahamas fielded a team in 2004 and 2008. I don't know, I guess because due to finances, we, we weren't able to field the team this year. Chef Sweeting still has one more individual competition coming up next week, and then there's Chef Ron Johnson who will be competing on Monday. And our cameras will be right there. Reporting for our news in Effort, Germany, I'm Christina McNeil. walking around in the city. It's like 40 degrees. Boy, I've already been lost, so you're not getting that lost. It's also about to be sunset. And I think we're walking away from everything in the city. We are. We're walking to the other city. But we're on a tram line, so we should be fine. So when we were walking, we saw an ad for this club. Um, with like a male review, but no, female, a but a woman review. Woman review. Um, and Steven actually saw the club where it's taking place because he got lost, and now he's taking me on the same route where he got lost. Yeah. We're on the right track. <laughs> yeah, there's some place that sells American hot dogs and nails right next to us. What a perfect combination, made in heaven. But it is beautiful, I must admit. I don't know where he's trying to take me or us. So, today was a pretty chill day. We didn't have to cover any competition. But tomorrow we'll be back out quite early. Don't make it work, but I gotta, I gotta present it different. <laughs> Johnson going all out for what may be his last culinary competition, but he says all of the hours of hard work and preparation were worth it. Johnson left his hotel at 3.30 this morning in order to arrive at the venue and arrange all of his dishes before 6 a.m. In a competition of this magnitude, every minute counts. This is going to probably be my last competition, um, especially of this magnitude, you know, uh, this, is, this is a lot of stress, you know, so um, my plan is to make it worthwhile, you know, I, I didn't come this far, you know, not to, not to get something worth, worthwhile. This is Johnson's second time competing in the Culinary Olympics, but this is the first year the competition has seen individual entries of this magnitude. As many as 800 chefs from around the world are being judged on their culinary aptitude and artistry. In this competition, Johnson was required to create four cocktails and a five-course festive menu. He describes two of the tapas featuring seafood. It's a savory shrimp, tomato and basil don't donut it, with a tomato glaze, uh, shrimp and, and some onion glass and garlic chip. The second one is a salmon cheesecake with a salmon tartar, salmon skin and orange bell pepper gel. It's important to note that these dishes may look appetizing but no one will actually taste them. You can fool these I'm judges because they're going to smell things, they're going to look, they're going to um, examine for, I mean for um, for, uh, uh, I mean, precision, things of that nature, you know, your flow, you know, the balance on the plate. So although someone, uh, I mean, quote unquote, not tasting it, um, you've reached a level of, uh, of uh, skill where, where they trust that you know what you're doing, but they're still going to analyze it and, and, and dissect it. Meanwhile, Chef Sheldon Tracy Sweeting competed in the individual competition on Saturday, bringing home a silver medal for his culinary creations. The judging is like super, 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 super hard. Um, but I'm proud. I break the bronze barrier. Um, we're getting there. I, I won a silver medal I'm, and I'm very, very proud of that. It's a lot of hard work, dedication, and a lot of long hours. Chef Sweden will compete in another individual competition tomorrow. Reporting for our news in Effort, Germany, I'm Christina McNeil.
shopping for snacks. Hot paprika chili. This is hot and spicy red chili. Ketchup flavored. day of competitions for our Bahamian chefs competing at the 2016 Culinary Olympics. But no matter the outcome, they say competing at this level would never have been possible without necessary support. Chef Sheldon Tracy Sweeting presented his last round of hot and cold tapas as well as a five-course festive menu today. He says it has been an honor to represent the Bahamas on the world stage. So I'm trying to get all in now because in case I don't compete again, I'm 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 happy with it myself mm -hmm. and I'm 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 at peace. If I do, I do. If I don't, all the same. I feel good. Feels good to represent myself and my country. A good part for me is you get to see what the other chefs are doing, national teams and some of their work is like stupendous off the chain, you know. But they have a they have a like some of those teams are machines, literally. They have the backing, they have the, the research, they have everything going for them. The funds, you know, and you need a lot of that to compete on, on the world stage. But he and Chef Ron Johnson say their participation in the competition would not have been possible without the support of Cable Bahamas and the Bahamas Ministry of Tourism. Myself and, and Chef Johnson, we appreciate uh, both um, Cable Bahamas and the Ministry of Tourism for, for, for their support because if it wasn't for them I don't think we'd be here and as far as, as we've, we've come um, I can't even say thank you enough. They have defrayed a lot of the uh, I mean the cost because this is a very um, expensive undertaking especially as a I mean individual I mean as a uh, I mean team you know you it, it's it's more of a of it's more of a of a collective, uh, I mean, gathering, but, but as an individual, I'm having to source things, you know, just for one person by yourself, just from a logistical standpoint, uh, not, not even counting the, uh, I mean, food, you know, is, is, is very expensive. And being so far from home, Sweeting and Johnson say it was encouraging to see a few familiar faces. I mean, you guys are here and you're from Cuba, Bahamas. This is the first time we have had someone shooting us live and, 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 and able to report Oh, as you can see, you said you went and you walked the floor and saw some of the stuff. You see how serious and, and, and how, how, how dedicated and passionate people are about food. I think sometimes we take it for granted because it's just food, but it is a serious, serious business. Sweet Ang already has a silver medal under his belt from this year's competition, and Johnson will be bringing home a certificate. Reporting for our news in Effort, Germany, I'm Christina McNeil. We're trying to figure out what kind of eggs they were. Then we noticed it comes with salt. And the price. And the price. Where's the price? The price might be correct. Oh, is that a zero? Because I, I thought it was 31. I don't know. Okay, that's a date. That's a date. That makes more sense. Yeah. It is 169. Okay. <laughs> Let's move on because we're still in the. Look, look, look. Coconut, coconut, coconut. Yeah, coconut. How do you pronounce that though? I don't know. Coconut oil. That's actually like wow. This is cheaper. This is cheaper than that. Yeah. Well, it's tiny, so probably not. A green smoothie. Other smoothies. Everything looks so good. So Stephen, how smart was it for us to come into a food store after interviewing chefs? Like, how hungry are you? Because I know how hungry I am. Oh, okay. I mean, I'm relatively hungry. Um, even hungrier. What's that? 
noodles. Brown, brown noodles. Oh, uh, can I feel it? It's regular fried um, ramen noodles. They have curry flavor. And I don't know what flavor Hana is. Or okay, I don't know. Magic Asian. I'm gonna say vegetable. No, Han yeah. is the. Okay, no, I don't know. <laughs> I was gonna say that's the brand. No, I don't want. Noodle in ramen sauce. I don't want one. Of those. I feel like I want something hot. Hmm? I feel like I want something hot to eat. Yeah. This is for Alexia and all of them. Yeah, send them the picture. This is all of them again. Nothing else. is your German. After more than a week in Germany, our Bahamian chefs give it a try. Oh German, I haven't learned any German. The only German I know is taco. Oh, whatever. <laughs> oh, good morning, something. You don't say much, like, for real. All people do it when they don't understand you. They tell you, Google. Although they may be experts in the kitchen, Chef Sheldon Tracy Sweeting and Ron Johnson found themselves turning to the internet for help communicating with non-English speakers. Guten Morgen, danke. Uh, <laughs> but, 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 I mean, other than those two, I just show a, I mean, picture, you know, because, you know, uh, I mean, everybody is, uh, uh, I mean, I mean, vis visual, you know, that's, that's more of an inter international language. Effort is the capital and the largest city in the state of Thuringia, found in central Germany. If you look it up online, you will find that the city is known for having emerged from World War II with very little damage. It also has quite a diverse population, with foreign residents from Russia, Vietnam, and the Ukraine, among others. But with competition on their minds, Chef Sweeting and Johnson said they were looking forward to a day off to explore the city. Well, the weather for the last two or three days has been very, very cold, which I, I love the cold. You know, you get to put on clothes as opposed to taking it off. Um, but for the most part, it was just, you only have enough time to prepare for the competition. I will enjoy it tomorrow. Right now, I've not been enjoying much of it because I've been cooped up in this in this room, making sure that my uh, uh, me team teammate is is uh, me focused on his work as well as me getting myself together, you know. Um, on the other hand, um, our, our assistants that came along with us, they've, they've been having a good time. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm kind of jealous, you know, that they've been going out and having fun, and I've been cooled up here. Reporting for our news in Effort Germany, I'm Christina McNeil.